if you look amongst the Facebook people who are the alternative media group on there, there's not a lot about the NRC FOIA documents. I haven't seen it. And if there is, it doesn't tie it into the larger picture with Obama, give you the fatality numbers, give you the history of three mile and you know, and give you that big lock, big picture to paint that so people can make a decision being given the entire arena of facts that they need to make an informed decision. That's critical in my articles, and that's what I do. And I say that is the difference between mine and the other few articles. If, and I don't knock any news informable. You really want to uh, go to those sites. There's a lot of good information there. And Alexander Higgins also as well. He has the uh, real-time EPA monitors, which might not get to talk about tonight, but they're spiking over 100 count in Bakersfield, California. And according to Berkeley, a hundred count is high, and anything over that you should be worried about. So Fukushima is an ongoing problem, not going anywhere. Thanks to alternative media, we did not get the word out in time to make a difference in the election. And not just I'm not picking on Obama, like I say. Romney is also either ignorant or bought and paid for because he thinks nuclear power is queen at the debate the other night. He says that. So, And he won't mention the FOIA documents to, to, to use that as a tool, a pry bar against Obama in order to unseat him so he can't get another you know, four years, we don't want it. We don't want Romney either. Personally, I'm thinking of voting Green Party for Jill Stein, who's against nuclear power and has a lot of other good parts of their platform as well. Okay, back to the thing. So the second herd is basically they're underestimating their opposition. So I suggest people give it some more thoughts, some more contemplation, and just pretend in your mind, play games, pretend you're George Soros, pretend you're Illuminati, and you have all these trillions of dollars. What would you do? What would you do? You open a few radio stations, you open some TV stations, you hire some shills, you hire some trolls. You know, that's what you do with it, and you influence public opinion. And that's what Hillary Clinton said. She wanted 40,000 fake user accounts so she could sway public opinion. But they're not losing the information war, but hey, why not pour it on right near the end? And you know, People ask me, how can Alex Jones and some of these sites give some good information? Because I don't deny that. They actually do give some really good information. But it's not the best information. They, that's distractionary, really, in the end, because nothing comes of it. What's come of all the 9-11 talk? That's a big subject. You can talk about the USS Liberty. That's a big subject. I saw someone post something about the Poppy Bush White House era and the prostitution, the gay, you know, whatever, in the White House. But nothing's going to come of that. The difference is on Plumegate, we've got all the evidence that someone in the DOJ or some prosecutor needs to be issuing indictments, and then that will all lead back to the White House and we can find out who was involved. Because in the documents, they don't really mention names. It just says White House meeting. So we know the White House heavily White House lead, that kind of thing. We know they're involved, but to what extent? And if we don't get people on the stand in a relative time before memories fail and they're like Gonzalez, I can't recall, you know, Time is of the essence. Now let's talk about the third herd, because that's those of us now who are waking up, really kind of waking up as best we can, and understanding that something is terribly wrong in the alternative and some of the independent media. We'll see how this plays out and who carries Plumegate to the degree that they should, and you know what I mean by that, by giving the big picture, the death toll, the, you know, the children's doses to California, exposing that kind of information is critical. The third herd is awake and that they know they are being fooled and that they are aware of the many different levels of perceived realities. I explained to you, we're like Neo waking up out of his chamber into another chamber. And then we still got to get on that one because Alec Jones is in that second chamber and he's not going to tell you about Plumegate. So you still haven't woken up yet. Now, the third herd is awake. The third herd is awake. They know they're being fooled. Example, my cat has no idea about the impending Iran war or World War III or even the concept of war. Does that make Iran or war any less real? In the same manner, the third herd knows there is much they don't know, just like the Greek philosopher Socrates did. The third herd knows how difficult it is to find the truth about the events unfolding before us. They know the true rulers of this planet, we shall call them the Illuminati, have bent their resources and willpower to find all human weaknesses and exploit them. They understand that the human brain is a flesh computer. It has desires. It has fears. It is programmable. It can be automated. The third herd know this and know the Illuminati know this and are using it against the human race. And that's important you understand that because I often, when I talk with people, I tell them it's as if someone sat down and studied every human weakness and to try to figure out how to exploit every human weakness that there is to the fullest potential. And they're very effective in that. I think they're being very effective with that right now. Oh, a point ago I was going to make, I forgot. Why is Alex Jones giving good information? Well, look. 
I think it's, they don't have much longer to go. I mean, look at the FEMA coffins, FEMA camps, and all this bullet acquisitions. If this is, in fact, correct, and if this is really going on, there's a lockdown or takeover or some event plan, an X, you know, whatever you want to say, then they only have to keep it going for so long. So during that period of time, he can roll out some good stuff. He can give you the Texas Sunshine Project and Fast and Furious and some damning stuff on government. I, I no doubt about it. I learned about eugenics from Alex Jones. That's the first person I really heard about that from, so I don't deny that. But in the long run, as time plays out, we will see just how much longer we have before there's some kind of new world order, one world takeover, and a military crackdown as people are theorizing. So that does play into that timeline. They're going to give you some, not something so bad that people really raise a fuss and, and something comes of it, you see, because right now they're automated. And in these, in these little classifications of mine, they're each going about doing what they've kind of been programmed to do. And so it's, it's critical you understand that. I forgot to mention that a minute ago. Okay, so I hope you understand this concept of the first, second, third herd, and the fourth herd. I say is Illuminati, and of course they, you know, they know as much information as they you know, they can possibly know. I would suspect not everything. They're not gods or demigods. They may be humans. Maybe they're not even on this planet. I don't know, but it certainly seems to me, just from my studies, that there is some group or organization that is very carefully controlling the entire planet, from the hoax of a war with Iran. And if you've read my article. Iran versus USA to fix it then. When you look at nanotechnology, when you look at bioweapons, you know, nuclear technology is old, and besides, it ruins the place that you bomb. You can't go in and take all their resources right away or take their planes off the runway or hijack their computers. When you use a nanoweapon, well, it's possible to just have bodies laying everywhere, have Halliburton come in, pick up the bodies, and the spools of war are yours to keep. So that's something to keep in mind. There's this grand chess game being played out. And I tell you that it includes all components of the media. It includes the mainstream. It includes the, the second rank outlets. And the third rank outlets would be the alternative media. Second rank is, and this is from the Protocols of Zion, the second rank outlets would be like a Huffington Post. For example, they will tell you that we need to legalize marijuana, but they still tend to legitimize the war on terror you know, meme. And so they're trying to attract the tepid and indifferent, people who haven't made up their mind yet. And I see this a lot. Don't fall for the, hey, I smoke pot or whatever kind of thing, and then trust someone just because they're willing to tell you that they've discovered that cannabis should be legal. And don't be a one-issue voter either. There's serious issues right now. I think the nuclear problem has reached such a degree on this planet that if it's not addressed soon, I mean, it, it may just be too, maybe too late now. I don't know. But they want to build two new plants in Levy County, Florida, we're in the midst of a long-term drought, and these two plants will draw from the aquifer. And that, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> that's the madness of, of nuclear power, because they're just not doing anything logical, because if they have gone completely insane. Now, before I go, I want to finish by uh, saying one more thing. Keep in mind that this, these vast uh, financial resources that these power elite, these corporate you know, leaders have, they're able to buy scientists. They're able to open foundations. They're able to have their own special studies done and, and magazines posted up. So they can then refer back. They can say, well, no, there's no emissions because of this. And you can, you, they'll have an article. They'll have a link. A scientist will come out, very well paid, and say something he knows is not true. Online, you have the quote unquote trolls and the quote unquote chills. You know, I didn't know about this either until I got my laptop and got on Facebook and I got trolled so hard I, I had to write a song about it. You know, check it out. It's on my YouTube channel. So keep in mind, it's just critical you understand and play with it in your mind. Pretend you've got the money. What would you do? How would you hire the shills? What kind of you know? Think about it. Give it some time and think about it. Once you play around with it, you'll begin to realize that they're very clever, and they've. They've covered all their bases. They've inserted people. It's very deep. There's more than you, know, you would suspect are in there. And the, again, I rest my case on the fact that the summer came and went, and no one really paraded around with this blockbuster issue that Obama should have faced the consequences, right? Is he such a buffoon? He was just oblivious to it all. You know, he just I don't know anything about it. You know, that's not good. Can't reelect him on that. Right? Was he lied to by the NRC and DOE and CDC and the FEMA and DHS and all these agencies that conspired and kept him out of the loop like Poppy Bush and, and lied to him? Is that possible? You know, or is Obama totally in on it? Now, I didn't get to the death tolls tonight, but I wanted to do the, the four herds, no derogatory 
term meant by that, just classification, so you better understand. I promise next time we'll cover the death fatality mortality index numbers where they, they go in and look and see uh, 14 weeks prior to Fukushima, how many people were dying on average, and then 14 weeks after, and you see it bumps up just like in Chernobyl. And I posted a link on my YouTube um, video I posted today about my blog talk tonight to the Fukushima Chernobyl a bird study, I call it, and it's very interesting. Please watch it. It's 30 minutes that confirms that this is not an accident. It's not just humans dying in, in elevated numbers, but this guy studies birds, and the birds are also dying in elevated numbers, just as they did when he studied Chernobyl. And if you look at these studies from the fatality index after Chernobyl, again, now we have confirmation. I think Mangano and Sherman might not have put this together in their uh, study that, they, that I'll go over tomorrow but probably someone needs to get with them and let them know and see this bird study, which kind of confirms, again, a secondary confirmation of everything they've been saying. Okay, I've got less than three minutes left tonight. I had to get to the fatality index numbers, but real quick, according to the thing I'm looking at, by 2031, we'll be well over a million cancer-related you know, fatalities, and, the, and plutonium is five to ten years later, so it doesn't happen right away. You have to keep that in mind. We'll go over those next time, and again, thanks to Red Button Studios, Itchy Sacks 4, Miss Milky the Clown, Nibiru Magic 2012, and especially 2012 Truthers helping me out there. So I'm going to uh, end this broadcast tonight. I appreciate you joining me, and I promise next time we'll go over the Mangano Sherman study, and we'll look at the other study by this Bobby One fellow who's just taken the Mangano Sherman and just going on into the future with it for projection so you can kind of see what's going to happen. Of course, that's all dependent that Fukushima doesn't become worse. And if you look at Alexander Higgins, go in there and, and Google his live EPA RADnet monitors, and you can see this last week and even 18th and 19th, there were spikes over 100 counts per minute and beta radiation, a 1,000 counts per minute. And according to the Berkeley, like I say, over 100 is something to be worried about. So if this is correct, we're, we're constantly being inundated with radiation, something to keep in mind. Okay, thanks for joining me tonight, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. We'll go over the fatality figures. Over and out.